Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay guys, I'm coming at you mid-move. I apologize about the lighting, I apologize about the sound, but I don't know where my light or my mic is, so this is how it's gonna go. I'm also going to try to make this as quick as possible because I do not yet have internet, so all of my internet comes from like a prepaid hotspot, so I wanna keep the file size of this relatively small. Also, I've not read that much so far this month. So this is my uh, monthly what am I reading right now, catch up of what I've read and what I'm thinking about reading next because of the move, which all my stuff is actually now here. So that's exciting. I just have to start like putting things away, getting the internet details. Now that that is done, I will have more time to read, but because I've been moving, I've not had that much time to read. I have read five books so far, so I'll do a quick rundown of that and then I'll tell you what I'm thinking about reading next. So in terms of what I've read so far, uh, let's start low and go high. So I've had one three star, two 3.5s and two fours. So my three star book was Memory and Death, which was the next installment in the In Death series that I needed to read. It wasn't bad. I just felt like structurally it was kind of weird. Like the actual main murder doesn't happen until like a quarter or a third of the way through. And so the first part of the book just felt like it was treading water a little bit and it wasn't my favorite mystery in that series that I've read. So, but that's, that's just kind of part of a series. There are highs and lows. I wouldn't say this is a low. It just wasn't like one of the better ones. So three stars on that. Then I had a 3.5 star, which was Spectacle by Jody Lynn Zadrock. And this is basically like YA historical with a serial killer slash supernatural twist to it. So if you have read Y.S. Lee's The Agency, it's a lot of those vibes in terms of like the historical mystery piece. But then it also is a serial killer mystery and there is supernatural element to it. And it's set in Paris, like in the late 1800s. The premise is really cool. Like the main character is a 16 year old who is the morgue reporter for a uh, newspaper, which was a thing in that time period. So that part I think is really cool. A lot of it is good. I like the characters. There was a lot of things in it I liked. I think that the writing didn't fully connect with me just because it felt very much like I have done historical research on this time period in Paris and let me tell you some of the things that I've learned. And that just kind of got on my nerves a little bit. But that being said, I felt like this was a YA book that was actually aimed at young adults and not adult YA readers. And I really appreciate that. So 3.5 stars, I would recommend it. If you think it sounds intriguing, go for it. I mean, it's a serial killer book, so some warnings there, but I thought it was pretty good all in all. Then the next one on my list that was 3.5 stars was The Bind Up of Benty. I got that as an arc and I, th I think I gave it, I I gave it 3.5 stars and I think I was a little disappointed in this just because it had been hyped up so much. So, um, and also because I really liked Nettie Okorafor's, another book of hers that I read last year, which was A Kate a Witch. I thought that was really good. I just, it was good, but not great. And I definitely agree with the critiques that it didn't really belong as a novella. I just think structurally there were some issues with making this three novellas instead of trying to make that into like a cohesive story. That being said, the characters I really like, the premise is super cool and I actually like the world quite a bit. I just think that structurally this book ha or this novella I guess really has some problems and it definitely has like sort of a deus ex machina kind of element I think to the wrap up of it. So good 3.5 stars but not as good as I'd been led to believe by the way people talk about it. And then the two four star things I read and I'm sure I'll talk about these more in my end of month wrap up but just to shout them out. So first of all Howard's End which is actually uh, something I read for a book club that I'm going to this afternoon. I really enjoyed this. I frankly wish I hadn't had to read this so quickly. Like I was definitely employing my like read fast techniques on this. And I wish I'd had more time to savor it, but just because of the move and when the book club is, I had to read it kind of quickly. I really, really enjoyed this. This is like got some super interesting feminist elements to it that I really enjoyed. I really think that it's an appropriate book for this moment in history in terms of it's sort of like wrestling with capitalism and like wealth versus income as your way that you're rich. And I don't know, it just was really good. I very much enjoyed this. It's a four star for me, mostly because there's a relationship in here that I think like I fundamentally just don't buy. And that kept it from being like 
amazing or like as good as I wanted it to be, but really enjoyed this. Like I read A Room with a View back in the day and enjoyed that. And I'm excited that I like this even more. And this now makes me want to read more from Ian Forrester. So four stars on this. And then the other four star book that I had was Say You're Sorry by Karen Rose, which I really enjoyed. I thought it was going to be like a cozy thriller kind of thing or a cozy like romantic suspense -y kind of thing. There ain't nothing cozy about this. This is like a straight up serial killer book. And I just thought it was really well executed. It is romantic suspense in the sense that it's like there's a central couple that's getting together in it. But yeah, I think that anybody who likes serial killer mysteries would like this. All the trigger warnings, very graphic in that respect. Um, but it was really good. And it also has like um, a cult element to it that's going to be like the running thread throughout the series I'm pretty sure and I'm very excited about that yeah just really enjoyed it um, it came out on February 12th I think definitely recommend and I will definitely keep reading in that series in terms of what I'm currently reading I am halfway through the next in death book that I needed to read which is Born in Death by JD Robb I'm liking it much better than Memory in Death I'm gonna guess it's gonna end up being a four star but it's it's a good one I quite enjoy it and then after that I'll read Creation and Death so I'm hoping I get through three in death books this month to make up for the fact that I got through none last month. So that's where I am with those. I'm also at the beginning of The Moving Finger by Agatha Christie, which is the next Marple book I need to read. And I'm going to be totally honest, guys, I'm not that into this. And like, I'm struggling to get through it. Maybe it picks up. I don't know. And it might just be because I'm moving and a little scattered. So I mean, I'm going to finish it, obviously. Not as good as the first three that I read, uh, that I reread actually for this for this project. So We'll see how I do with that. And then once I do finish with it, I am doing a buddy read with the protagonist of A Murder is Announced. So I'm excited to, to get to that one. I remember liking, well, I looked on Goodreads and I only gave it three stars the first time, but I remember it fondly. So we'll see how I do with that. Other things that I'm going to be reading, let's see on my little list here. Right now, let me cut to my footage of me picking my reading mug book from my 19 books that I wanna read in 2019 TBR. Let me cut to that. Hey guys. Coming at you from ye old distant past, aka probably about two weeks ago by the time you're watching this, to pick TBR jar. I don't, what do we people call this TBR jar? But it's a mug, my must read mug. Who knows? Okay, so I've got my mug. And having learned from last, last month's debacle, which was not a debacle, I enjoyed what I read. I am going to pick three options this time. So mixing it up, I promise not not cheating here. My first one is year one by Nora Roberts. Okay, that could be a good option because it's light. Also, I have it as an ebook. So I don't have to worry about keeping <laughs> keeping track of the physical book for it. My next one is the buried giant by Kaza Ishiguru. That is a physical book. So I would have to hold it out from packing. It's also a fan well we will talk about it later okay and then my third one is bayou moon which is also an ebook so i think i'm gonna go ahead and just like definitively say we're not gonna read the buried giant this month just because it is a physical book and um i don't want to have to keep track of it during the move so i will either read year one or bayou moon and I think I should probably read Bayou Moon because that was on my five star prediction thing. That was a book I picked last spring that I thought I would give five stars to and I'm trying to wrap that up. I only have like three or four left on that list. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to read Bayou Moon as my must read mug pick for the month. I will send you back to the future now. So as you can see, I think I'm probably going to try to make Bayou Moon my read for this month. And I think that's going to be my reward for finishing doing my clean out this week. <laughs> Next weekend, I'm going to cuddle in with Bayou Moon and just enjoy it. So I've got that two arcs that I have for March that I'd like to read this month if I can. One is The Tesla Legacy by K.K. Perez. And that is a YA sci-fi book that Beautifully Bookish Bethany recommended to me. So I'm excited to give that a try. And then The Fifth Doctrine by Karen Robards comes out in March. And it is kind of like a cozy thriller, I think, from what I've gathered. So excited to tuck in with that. And then if I happen to have time beyond that, um, I have several contemporary romances as arcs that are coming out in April and May. So I may try to get ahead with that if, if that's what I'm in the mood to read. And then in the mail, I got Blood Witch by Susan Dennard. And in theory, I mean, it came out and I would really like to go ahead and read it. 
but the reality is February is filling up really quickly. So there's a pretty good chance that I'm gonna have to punt this to March. That is it for my casual version of my what I'm reading right now slash my speedy version. Again, I'm sorry if this was a little rushed, but I wanted to get something up. I really love doing these every month and I know you guys like watching them. Yeah, wish me luck on finishing unpacking. As you can see, my books are still on the floor shelves are over there. I am doing a movie, a bookish moving vlog. So you guys will see me in the process of re shelving my books and all that in that video whenever I get it cut together. Stay tuned for that. Uh, aside from that, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I will just talk to you guys again soon. Bye.